September the 20th, in Yangon. Thousands of monks flooded the street in the pouring rain. The people of Yangon followed them with bare feet. It's been a week since the monks joined the protest. The news overnight of the arrest of monks associated with the protest attracted even more crowds. Holding hands, the people surrounded the monks to protect them from the threat of the military. The riot was not suppressed, and as warned, the military are dispatched. The demonstrators and military confront each other. It's a moment of crisis. Finally, the worst has happened. Casualties are caused by the military's violent suppression. On the 15th of August, the Myanmar military regime doubled the price of oil and quadrupled the price of gas. The anti-government protest in Myanmar has already claimed lives. To make sure these sacrifices will not go to waste, the international community should step in to create true democracy in Myanmar. Οι απώλειες των Ηνωμένων Πολιτειών και των στρατιωτών της Συμμαχίας στο Αφγανιστάν γίνονται μεγαλύτερες μέρα με τη μέρα. Even if they were to bring in some more troops, but if they continue to use the same old methods, then they will not succeed, they will fail. Afghan national will does not accept them and it is symbolized by the activities of Taliban. Although they are not Taliban, it's a national movement of liberation. A lot of districts and areas are out of their hand. Taliban are uh, ruling them, ruling that areas. Yes, if the Americans continue to follow their policies and the government of Pakistan continues to show weakness, then the split in the society will widen, it will create more problems for us, and it will spread to other parts of the country as well. Worst case scenario is a civil war in Pakistan. The Pervez Musharraf must not sit on our heads and create more problems for Pakistani society. He should uh, call it off now. I think he has run his course. From the door, it, where the EFP hit, it hit behind me, um, lifted me up on top of the radio mount, and blew the doors off. Where they at? Where they at? I lost a couple of my friends. One of my best friend to a sniper. Gunner got him shrapnel into his shoulder and his leg, and then um, they killed a um, first lieutenant. Sniper got hit him right there in his shoulder into that main artery, and uh, he bled to death. The American Ramstein Air Base, just like every morning, transport aircraft land here, bringing wounded from the battlefield. Today, not only an aircraft from Iraq is landing, but also one from Afghanistan. Over the nine months that she has worked here, Teresa Gully has seen the most horrible injuries. Still, according to Teresa, the soldiers suffering from psychological trauma are the most difficult to handle. It's the largest slum in Iraq. A breeding ground for disaffection and radicalism. A place of fierce religiosity, yearning for the Americans to go and the Messiah to come. The fortress of a firebrand, America believes, has helped set the country ablaze.
The outside world usually sees the Baghdad suburb of Sada city when its enemies attack. After atrocities like the suicide bombings that killed at least 160 people there last November, Saddam renamed it after himself, Saddam City. But he and his Sunni elite weren't prepared to spend much money on it. Now it's called Sada City, after Moqtada's father, Grand Ayatollah Muhammad Sadek al Sada, a revered cleric murdered, probably on Saddam's orders, in 1999. <laughs> Dr Maha, as usual, blames the Americans and looks forward to the Islamic government of the Mehdi. <laughs> But that's a dream that's unlikely to replace Sada City's nightmare anytime soon. For holiday makers, not much has changed in Fiji. After initially being scared away by last December's military takeover, tourists are returning to discover Fiji's as relaxing and safe as ever. But outside these little patches of paradise and in the lives of ordinary Fijians, dramatic change has occurred. One night in February, only kilometres from the international airport and glossy tourist resorts, the military picked up a 19-year-old boy. It was Alanieta Rambaka's youngest son, Sakusa, who was accused of smoking marijuana. After one month of almost constant pain, Sakusa Rambaka died. The post-mortem cited the cause of death as hemorrhage as the result of blunt trauma. So you don't think there's any doubt that he died because of yes. the beating he received? He, died. he definitely died because of the beating. People like Graham Leong go across to Hong Kong and Canberra and New Zealand and run uh, the nation down and, and give all sorts of lies which people believe and, and they're not helping our cause. But isn't that just free speech? Doesn't that happen in any healthy free democracy? Free speech? What democracy? Your democracy or my democracy? 